Hi, I'm Stavros. Good morning and welcome to Lions of Limerick. I've got something very special to show you today, guys. We've got some rally cars from Ford's World Heritage Fleet in the UK that have been brought here to Ireland, to Lions of Limerick. Oh yeah, you're gonna enjoy this. Let's go inside and have a look at the RS200 and the Mark II and Mark I Ford Escort rally cars. Wait until you see these. <laughs> Okay, so I'm now joined by Keith Lyons. Now, Keith Lyons is a rally driver himself. He drives a Ford Fiesta R5, and his father, Ken, drives a Mark II Ford Escort. You would have seen the video I, I shot last year. So, Keith, we've got some very special cars to show them we now. Do, we do indeed, we do indeed. Yeah. Well, welcome back to Lyons Limerick again, Stavros. Anyways, great Thanks. to have you back. We've actually been blessed with um, three fabulous cars from, um, it's actually Ford's own World Heritage Fleet. It's actually yeah. the first time these cars have been outside the UK, <laughs> which, which they tell us, which is unbelievable. Yeah. So we're, we're, we're absolutely blessed and honored to have them here mm -hmm. in our showroom. The reason they're here with us is actually that we've actually opened up um, our showroom to now to be a Ford store, which is very, very unique. So there's actually only three Ford stores in the whole country. So oh. we're now one and we're actually the one looking after the whole west of Ireland. So it's actually allowing us to sell the likes of uh, what motorsport fans will be into. We yeah. can sell Mustangs and we can sell RSs, all the nice gear. So yeah, so the, basically we had the launch and um, we had these cars and we're here, we'll be able to show them off. So we've got the Mark II, we've got an RS200 and yeah. we've the Mark I. So it'd be great if you just come on over, we'll have yeah. a look at the Mark I and we'll go through it. We'll come back to the Mark II shortly and uh, we'll be back RS200. To this beauty in a minute. <laughs> yes. So this is actually the, the car that won the, the 1970 London to Mexico. Wow. Rally, yeah. 16,000 mile journey. <laughs> so it was actually won by the driver was Hanu Mikla, famous Finnish driver. And it was uh, Gunnar Palm, it was actually a, it was the co-driver who was uh, from Sweden. But um, the car, like, they're, they're before my time, so actually knowing the real, real detail in them would be kind of last. But just to see it and just to see the actual car that won, the, won that rally. But just yeah. the unique things that are in it, I suppose, like you've got the likes of the, the bull bars at the front, you've the roll bars here, yeah. all just to protect, I suppose, the windscreen. If there is ever a roll, they just keep on going. You'd never see the likes of these giant mud flaps That's at the right. front as well. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you're a very unique car. This car would have actually um, been at Goodwood. I think um, I've seen it up in Goodwood, but um, wow. yeah, like, even inside, like very, very basic in what we'd consider safety things and standard stuff these days. Yes. But it was, uh, it was considered quite safe back then. But um, uh, will we have a look at the boot first? Yeah, we can have a look at the boot there. So three fuel tanks. Yeah, I suppose on a long journey like that, you couldn't have them getting out every so often. Obviously, these cars would burn fuel quicker yeah. than most. So you can see here, very unique. There's actually one, two, and you've got three over here. All right, okay. It actually carried 136 litres of fuel, 30 gallons, Wow! which okay. is unbelievable for a, a car that size. Yeah, <laughs> all the little details, fantastic, isn't it? Yeah, we'll just have a look inside. Yeah, come around to the driver's side yeah. here. And the round tail lamps as well. Okay. The steering's on the right side for me anyway, coming out, <laughs> of, coming out of the R5. Yeah. But even to look at the seats and stuff, like, you know, it's something you'd go anywhere in that, like, you oh, know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. comfy it is. Yeah. Yeah. 16,000 miles. And how many days was that, Keith? Yeah, so they actually left London on April the 19th, 1970. 96 cars started the event. And on the finish line in Mexico City on May 27th, so you're looking at about five weeks, but only 20, 23 cars survived the event. Only 23? Yeah, so you could see like how grueling yeah. an event it must have been. Yeah. <laughs> only that many finished. Yeah. So okay. if, you, if, if you want to go back down the road there, you'll find a few Mark I escorts along the way as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and other things. Yeah, and then we have a little uh, slider here for the Yeah, it's to, well. it's to release the window. Yeah. The window can only go down so far. Like, yeah, so oh, yeah. yeah, so you can pull it back up. Just everything to, just to save weight. Oh, absolutely. I just drop it, drop yeah. it into the door. So that's fantastic, Keith. We will move on to this Mark II. We'll also have a look inside the engine bay. Yeah, we can see indeed. What's, uh, underneath there. <laughs> this, is, this is actually a very unique car as well. Again, this car was actually driven under two different registrations, but by the same driver. So this actually won the Safari Rally right. um, by Bjorn Valdegaard. And actually after the event, after winning, it was so wrecked and destroyed that they actually reconditioned it and brought it out then in this livery 
with the new registration with the British Airways, but it's the same car driven by the same driver. And he went on and he was um, he was actually um, he was dropped by another manufacturer and Ford picked him up, but he ended up beating all his teammates and everything. And uh, he won the RAC rally, which would have been a, a, a seriously grueling rally again back in the day, you know. Yeah. This is actually the type of car Mark II that Ken drives today, but a, yeah. ver a very different animal altogether. You can smell the fuel off it there. Yeah, I can smell yeah. it. Yeah, that, that smell, all right. Yeah. Very uh, unique smell to the rallies. Yeah. <laughs> we, we now pump yeah. in our fuel, as I showed you the last day. So this yeah. was all very much jerry cans and dumping them into the boot. <laughs> yeah, so we'll have a look underneath the bonnet. So. Yeah, we'll go around yeah. to the bonnet now. A serious engine if you go to any, uh, actually you'll probably be down to the Clarity Historic Rally oh, this I'll year. I'll be there. <laughs> yeah, the, the launch was actually on Sunday night, but um, the, you'll, you'll hear the noise of those BDAs going up Miles Gap. Yeah. You, you know all about it, five yeah, o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I'll be hiding in the, in the ditch Yeah. In the early hours of Saturday morning. Yes. All oh, right. Yes. Yeah, so Ken's engine is a Millington engine. Ken's is a Millington, yeah. yeah. Very hard to get, like the, the, the BDAs. The BDAs were just... Obviously, I'm almost sure they were an aluminium engine. They were like, you know, nearly two guys would carry it. Um, you know, to get those materials nowadays, it's just the, 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 the yeah. costs are just crazy. Yeah. So, Yeah, but of course, back then, they, did, they just didn't have the technology no, that no. Ken has in his car. You know? Yeah, the other it's the technology that, that makes the, the, the modern ones faster. Yeah. But these engines were probably better, though. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Definitely, definitely lighter, anyway. Yeah. The BDA. Okay. Very good. Keith? Keith, um, this particular example... Oh, that was, yeah, that was kindly dropped up yeah. by uh, Dan Kelleher. Dan Kelleher um, bought that car off Ford, he was telling me, 15 years ago. Um, it's actually an ex-Billy Coleman car oh, that right. himself and his dad refurbished and reconditioned. But it's, the detail in the car is, is serious, like, you know. Yeah. And ev even, even down to the, the jackets and he's got the Coleman's of Mill Street stickers and stuff like that. Like, it's... And will he be taking part in the Clarny Historic Rally? Um, I'd say he will, to be honest, Joe. Yeah. He, he, did, um, he did the Circuit of Munster this year, innit? Oh. Patrick Snyers, who'd be a very famous uh, world driver, yeah. drove that car in uh, Donegal Deja Vu this year. Oh. And it was his first time ever driving a right and drive rally car. And by all accounts, five minutes later, he was into the swing of things and throwing the car around. So, yeah, yeah no, it was meant to be brilliant to see. But, okay, um, we're going to move over to the RS200 car closer to my generation, a car that I would have remembered, having posters on the wall, <laughs> uh, you know, a real car way ahead of its time. But um, this is actually the road going version of the rally car. You'd mistake it for a rally car because the rally car looked no different. So what it was at these basically, to build a rally car, you can't just go into any old shed and build any old rally car and arrive out into the World Rally Championships. You actually, there's a homologation and there's a certain amount and you have, there's a minimum number of production cars you have to build and it's actually 200, and 200 is a magic number here. So Ford had to go and build 200 of these RS 200s to get their, their rally car. They were going out, they wanted, to be, they wanted to be competitive, they wanted to take on the likes of your Audi Quattros that were running away with the World Championship. So this happens to be, which we're delighted to say, this is the last one that rolled off the production line. This, the is, <laughs> this is number 200. That's number 200? Yeah, so wow. <laughs> That's pretty special. It's unreal, yeah. So we're, deli we're delighted to have it here today. Fantastic. And Keith, new, I was just looking up there, these would have been just under £50,000 50, new. £50,000 new, but back in 86, £50,000 new, someone will do the maths there, like that's over yeah. 100 grand, like, you know, it's... Yeah. They were... Um, um, and what sort of value would you put on it today, Keith? This I, 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 honestly, I don't know. <laughs> I, I know there's, they were going up in excess of 100, 150 uh, guys that had them, but yeah. you, you just, especially this one, number 200, you, oh, just, number 200, you couldn't yeah. put a value on it. I, I honestly don't know. <laughs> yeah. But it's just well, such a unique car, like. Yeah, and we can see the air intake here, Keith, as well. This is yeah, the so intercooler. if you look at that, that's for the intercooler, and it's the, obviously to cool down the engine and actually the intercooler itself. Yeah. But this is for the road going version, which was 250 brake horsepower. But when these went into rally mode, they were like up to 600 brake horsepower. Yeah. And then obviously then after what happened in, the, in, in Group B at the time, yeah. the cars were actually deemed too fast to rally. Yeah. So what they did is they, they actually did away with Group B and they bought it, brought in Group A, which went on to WRC and, 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 and so on. But what happened with these cars, obviously they didn't just go to the car graveyard, they actually went on to rally cross. 
and they went down to 650 and 700 brake horsepower and so on and they were very very competitive but what happens you'll notice if you see other pictures of them that gets bigger and bigger and bigger yeah. in other cars and it's just to cool down the bigger uh, the bigger engine and Keith so what is the maximum power now for a world rally championship car what's the maximum the, the maximum they were always kind of around 300 brake horsepower but the new modern ones they're probably up to 380 I'd say okay. um, they've got more aerodynamics I suppose they're probably getting close to where this car was before, but you've got better tires, better brakes, yeah. better aerodynamics. Uh, the cars are safer inside, the crowds are further back off the road. So yes. we're kind of, we're, it's, it's, it's another generation, like, you know. Yeah. Crowd control was a big issue. <laughs> These guys trying to, trying, to, trying to get that down through the stages was bad enough, but trying to get it down through the middle of crowds coming onto the road and the likes of Portugal was famous for it. It was just, yeah. Guys would watch the cars going past and they'd flood the roads to see it going. It was, it was incredible, but... Look at this. We've got the spare wheel. And look, we have these lamps here as well. So this must be a regulation. When you're parked on the side of the road working on your car, you need to have secondary lights because these lights would be pointing up into the air. Yeah, they're actually very unique. You'd never see them in behind the mesh here. Yeah, they're hidden in behind this. Yeah, you, yeah. they'd go unnoticed, but obviously they're there for when the car gets lifted up. Yeah. Or the, 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 the tailgate gets lifted up, you'll be able to see them. And Keith, the rear suspension, I know that this is a road going version, but what that's, way would it differ? That's very unique. Yeah. Having, having the twin is very, very unique, but um, it would differ probably in, in, the, in, in a rally car. Nowadays, they wouldn't just have, they'd have all the ProFlex and they'd have the Rieger where you can actually, it's, it's fully adjustable. Yeah. This is just like a build steam where it's just, you know, it's, it's just the shock is taking it up and you can change then, obviously depending on gravel or tarmac would be the length of it and then the, the, the actual, the, the, how strong the spring is or how soft the spring is basically. Yeah. And then we have an air intake here for your air filter. Yes, yeah, so you've air intake and the far side the scoop just cools yeah. the engine, so it's directly into the engine. Let's just have a look at the far side here. Again, that's what I was saying about the, as the cars progressed, they got bigger and bigger, the roof scoop on the, on the roof. Yeah just to allow more air into that engine. It just found that it was getting too hot, the, the more brake horsepower that was coming out of it. Oh yeah, it's, it's, it's class to look underneath them here, Keith. It's unbelievable, yeah, yeah, in fairness. I mean, we're going back to 1986. And uh, yeah, this was, I mean, Keith, when you, when, you put, when you take into account the amount of money that Ford must have spent yeah. on this car, you know, like developing it, designing it, and then in the end, then Group B was all just cancelled. It, it, it was literally as they launched, I'd say it wasn't even a full year yeah. and Group B was cancelled and then they had to concentrate on another project. Yeah. So they had to find a home for these cars, but they became very unique and a collector's item very quickly because first of all, they were limited. And then obviously, um, yeah. Yeah, we'll just have a look inside now. Yeah, we can come up here. Yeah. Now, obviously the rally version would have no carpets or anything, but we have a... Uh, Sort of a, a few luxuries here, your bucket seats. Yeah, so still in today's terms, very basic, yeah. but in rally terms, this was actually quite plush. Um, so you obviously, as you see, you've carpet everywhere. Yeah. Um, it has elements of a uh, Ford Sierra. Yeah, small elements yeah. in the dash and things like that. I, 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 I believe the doors as well. Yeah, the yeah. doors look like they're yeah. off a of Sierra. And then the rear taillights are also off the Sierra. Definitely, yeah. So. Just small areas where they saved money, but believe me, it still would have cost them a fortune to get this developed and on the road. Um, yeah, Keith, we'll just open up the front. Yeah, we can, yeah, we'll open up just, here. Just uh, give you a look underneath there. Um, yeah, I better get uh, one side. Yeah, I'll, <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll, need, I'll need your help here. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Let's lift it up nice and careful. Number 200. All right. And we do have a small little boot here. Yeah, if you're going on a cross country, across Europe, you won't be taking this car. If you're <laughs> yeah. going to the gym or something, yeah. you might be able to run up the road with it. We have but a bit of a carbon fibre at the bottom here, look. You do, yeah, that's gas, yeah. 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 So. So that is the only bit of boot that space. That is you the have. only that's bit it. of boot space. Other than that, it's down by your yeah. feet. <laughs> and your brake fluid, and yeah, very good. Yeah, your washer fluid is over on this yeah. side. Let me just stand back and give them a look how it looks. Yeah, it looks yeah. like a transformer. Yeah. So long before your Koenigseggs came down the line, Keith. Yeah. <laughs> Ford were building this. Yeah, it's unreal. Yeah. That's fantastic. 
So yeah, we just thought we'd uh, give you a look around some rally cars here at Lions of Limerick. But Keith, thank you so much. Really enjoyed looking around them. Yeah, I know, it was great to have you, and I'm sure yeah. I'll see you down at um, the Historics. It's actually on the 30th of um, November this year, down yeah. in Killarney. So that'd be actually a nice car to go up the gap in. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> this is too special. Yeah. Far too special for that, I'm afraid. But yeah, yeah, we'll be down there. Ken, Ken yeah. is rallying down there, so we'll, we'll be down there. We're going to give it a good go this year, so we're looking forward to it. So we have a few um, models on display. Yeah, and this, this car is actually very close in, in this Mark II here, very close in registration to the actual one that's behind us. But these were kindly left in um, by Ed Sinan. Um, Ed's a colleague of ours here, and he, uh, he also a rally driver himself. But he's got a, a serious display. These were the ones that he was able to bring in, but uh, yeah. Yeah, great um, detail in them. Yeah, oh, they're unbelievable. Like, yeah, it's a great thing to have. Okay guys, we've got a bit of bonus footage for you. I didn't really think this was going to happen, but Keith is bringing out the Mark II Ford Escort. Belonged to his father, Ken. And uh, we're going for a spin out on the road. <laughs> okay, let's go. Okay Keith, it's a bit wet out here, so let's hop in out of the rain. This should be fun, cold, slick tires uh -oh. in the wet. <laughs> See how we go. Yeah. Look at the carbon fibre on the floor, I showed you, and look! <laughs> yeah, the air gun, okay. Okay, we're just leaving now. It's a bit loud inside, and I even have a horn. What? <laughs> There's a horn for the cold driver. Window wipers, Stavros. Yeah. And water is your right leg. All right! Water is right leg. For spraying water up on the windscreen, look. <laughs> Keith is going to do a donut here now. <laughs> fantastic. Guys, I do hope you enjoyed the video looking at the rally cars. I had a fantastic time. A huge thanks to Lions of Limerick and of course Keith Lyons. <laughs> He's still revving it there. He's coming back. He's coming back. <laughs> Unreal! I loved it guys. So make sure you tune in to the Killarney Historic Rally coming up in December. No, the end of November, the end of November. Man, I love the key thanks. <laughs> That's a wrap guys. I do hope you can join me for another video on YouTube Stavros 969. Yeah!